name is Nikhil. I head the department of physiotherapy at PRS Neurosciences and I'm an advanced neuro rehab specialist. With the walking difficulty after the stroke, the reasons can be many. Uh, something which is very evident, like the muscle weakness. After the stroke, many of the people, they develop one side weakness or we call it as hemiplegia. So this muscle weakness itself is one of the main reasons they find it very difficult to walk. And another reason is uh, there is something called spasticity, which is when they try to move the limb, the limb become very stiff and they won't be able to uh, move the limb in a way that it is expected to move. Leg will be very stiff. So that uh, will make them very difficult to move the affected limb uh, during walking. Very common thing another we see is the joint tightnesses. May not be at the early stage but a later stage when the limb is not sufficiently exercised in the early stages the multiple joints, ligaments and the muscles will make some adaptive changes which causes stiffness around the joint which can adversely affect one person's gait pattern. Another one which is uh, extremely underlooked is the sensory feedback which is coming out from the leg, leg or the body, wherever it is. We all have at least one instance where our leg has become numb after sitting on the floor for a long time, after sitting for the long time. So you know, now we all know how difficult it is to take a couple of steps. This is exactly what happens when the sensory feedback is cut off uh, because of stroke, because of head injury or because of whatever the reason is. So sensory feedback plays a very crucial role in and it will plays, it can adversely affect a person's walking pattern to a great extent. There are some more other disorders, we call it as apraxia. They know the walking, but they cannot, they are not able to sequence it. They are not able to plan the things sufficiently. So there are some disorders like apraxia and there are other set of disorders when they have, you know, some kind of neglect or they are not really aware of one side of the body or one side of the space where they are standing, which can um, adversely affect the walking. Another thing we see is when they have a visual problem along, along with the stroke, like some kind of stroke, make the patient blind on one side of the, on the visual field they are looking at. Especially when the lower part of the vision is having a problem, they won't be able to see the ground sufficiently for them to walk. So usually these are the common difficulties the stroke people are facing uh, with walking. Ha, it's a very common question we all see. How much time will it take for a person to regain their walking skills? Or when after a stroke, when the patient will be able to restart walking? Um, it's a very difficult question for us to answer it. It depends a lot on the type of stroke, depends on the extent of the stroke. If it's a small stroke affecting only a small area in the cerebral cortex, usually they, they can walk far, they can come back to walking stage in a, in a faster rate. Location of the injury, suppose the lesion, the, the injury may be very small in the brain, but if it is in a very crucial area, like somewhere in the brain stem or someone's places called internal capsule, where all the, the nerves are very tightly packed. So in that case, even if the, the extent of injury is very small, they can have a you know, widespread effect on their body and their walking can be really delayed. We have seen patients, they start walking as early as the second day of the stroke till multiple months or on a very small 
uh, set of people, they will never regain the uh, ability to walk. But it's, yeah, it's a very small, minor set. Most of the people, it varies somewhere between a week to a couple of months is the approximate time that we can expect. What is the right time to start walking? Um, nowadays, there are a lot of you know, rehab centers, uh, therapists, they are strong promoters of something called an early mobilization. The problem with the early mobilization is um, before actually the, 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 the patient is ready, the neuromuscular system or say the sensory motor system is not completely ready for the walking. If they start putting them on a walking training at a very early stage, they may develop some kind of abnormal walking patterns very soon. So usually we say the right time of walking is not in terms of months, not in terms of weeks. The moment the patient develops sufficient neuromuscular control during, uh, on the trunk, on the hip, on the knee, ankle, upper limb, I think that is the right time uh, to, to promote walking. In, I mean, so there is no time frame like you know it, it, if the neuromuscular control comes in a week of time we can start the gait training as early as a week. If it is taking like two months, three months, we have to wait until the neuromuscular control develops sufficiently for an optimal outcome. So, why not early? The question is, do you want the person, the patient to walk somehow or do you want them to walk in the right pattern? For walking in the right pattern, they need to develop sufficient neuromuscular control. Like I said before, they should have enough control of their body, of the limbs. Then they can go back to a normal like walking pattern. Otherwise, always they may be taking the step somehow, but they, it, it won't be a correct gait pattern that we, we are expecting. So, all of us walk in a different walking pattern. The way I walk will be very different from how, how you walk, isn't it? But still. Biomechanically, there are different phases of a walking. There are, we divide that into primarily eight subsets or sub, sub stages in the walking. Even if you walk, I walk, the stages are same. So if the patient has to go back to their normal gait pattern, again, we need to reestablish all these phases of gait cycle or, or the walking pattern back. So, if it is not done sufficiently, why, how we develop this gait pattern? We have evolved over time and this is the most energy efficient way of moving from one place to the other. The moment you change the gait pattern from, fr to a, a, a new, uh, you know, gait pattern, like, a, you know, after a stroke, you must have seen many patients taking the leg to the side and they walk. The energy efficiency and the speed of walking drastically comes down. So they won't be, they get tired. The moment they take a couple of steps, they start getting tired. They will be very, uh, they may be feeling low energy. They may feel, be feeling weakness. The problem is they are expending too much of energy and the speed. All the people are walking at a, at a given pace. Most of these people, if they are walking in an abnormal pattern, their walking speed will be extremely low and if they walk like in this abnormal pattern for a long time this can lead to secondary changes in the joints capsules muscles and the other supporting structures so they are more prone to get the arthritis of the knee they are more prone to get any kind of ligament injuries so from a safety perspective 
this abnormal walking patterns put a lot of risk to this kind of bone and other other joint structures another problem is the safety and the balance so if they are not walking in the right pattern their balance reactions or the speed of they, they can correct their balance problem will be very slow so they won't be they 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 will be more prone to get a fall they may be more prone to get an imbalance which is very uh, very risky and another which is in my perspective it is something very something really uh, huge is a cosmetic factor suppose if a, this will definitely affect the person's social interactions and patient's ability to mingle in the society if by looking itself if people start uh, identifying the person as a stroke a person uh, is a stroke survivor the way they look at may be sometimes different so a lot of people in my experience they wanted to change the gait pattern because they wanted to look better while they walk they don't want to be identified separately in the society so these are the major problems uh, if we encourage the abnormal gait patterns and if the person has practiced for a very very long time correction is very difficult i am not say impossible but it is it's quite difficult so earlier always gives a better result if you start early we can get much better results but if the person is already walking in an abnormal gait pattern we should go to the we should go to the root cause and figure out why that is happening it can be sometimes because of like i said before maybe a joint tightness maybe because of spasticity maybe because of a lack of sensory feedback each one of it the way we handle it the way we manage it is completely different so you need to meet a gait training expert to get an expert opinion on how this can be corrected what is the the the, the factor which is affecting uh, that person's walking pattern we need to go to the root cause most of the things which are correctable we will try to correct which will help to get a bit better walking pattern and some of the things will be uh, very difficult to correct which we will teach them some compensatory strategies to move around so basically this is how if already person who is having a gait pattern this is how handle it meet an expert that will the expert can guide you how to go back to a normal walking pattern thank you